have been over a thousand. We know this, these numbers do not tell us much, especially as most of the killings go unreported. So we are holding this vigil for everyone who was, count, who was not counted, as well as for everyone who was. Right now, we live in a world where to be yourself means fighting a million different battles. Being able to choose to live your life and the identity, uh, life and identity the way you want is an uphill struggle. There are countless numbers of trans people who have suffered at the hands of prejudice, ignorance and vile discrimination. We've come today for many reasons. To show our disgust and anger at the innumerable injustices against transgender people around the world, as well as to show our love and support for anyone out there who would like to just be themselves without fear. I'm so glad so many people from so many different places all over the globe can be here today. We are part of a wider community that knows that when anyone is killed for being brave enough to embrace their chosen identity, we will be there to mourn them and celebrate them in equal measure. Frederick Douglass said, without struggle, there is no progress. I believe that the more we acknowledge what's going on with the world, talk with our friends, family, community, and raise awareness, the more changes that will be made. Injustice should not be fought by one group of people, but by everyone. If anyone, if anyone oh! Hell yeah! <laughs> Got a couple of people who would like to say some things. Um, It's a little bit dark, a bit chilly, a bit yucky, but um, I think that it says a lot that we've still managed to get here and get together to watch event. I think that's, that's really important. Um, I'm really pleased that um, Geo has uh, organised something tonight. I think that's really important too. Uh, as well as on Sunday, um, up at the Dorset Gardens Church, um, which I recommend going to. It's a, it's a lovely service every year. Um, that's great too. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Jess. I'm one of the trans reps for the NUS, which means I was elected to represent students in the UK who define as trans. Um, and actually the NUS have recently done a survey that uh, highlights the sort of battles that young trans people in further and higher education face on a daily basis. And that research showed that 55% have been a victim of abuse, insulting words and behaviour or threats of violence. And that is, that's a shameful statistic. Uh, but unfortunately it's not actually very shocking to me. Um, and those sort of, sort of attitudes are why today we have to remember our dead. Uh, we are remembering the 256 people who have been killed in the past year and the thousands upon thousands of victims and survivors whose lives have been threatened, destroyed and ended as a result of transphobia and a society that enables it. Sometimes it's, it's hard to get a sense of perspective when we talk about statistics but today we're mourning people just like us, uh, with families, friends and lovers everywhere. Uh, today we're remembering people like Kendall Hampton from Cincinnati who was shot. We're mourning Tiffany Gooden from Chicago who was stabbed to death. Um, we're grieving people like Brandy Martell, an outreach worker from Oakland, who was brutally murdered in her own car by some passers-by. These women are three of 256 people murdered in the past year simply because their gender identity varied from that which they were assigned at birth by a doctor. Uh, Please use today not only to remember these people, but to ask yourself what you can do to end a culture that seems to say that a trans person isn't a person. Uh, use today to correct a society that allows people to think that they should and that they actually could murder Brandy, Tiffany, Kendall and the countless others in our community. Use it to change a society in which a judge can rule somebody innocent of murder because the person that they admitted to killing was transgender. Yet, they put away trans women, like Cece MacDonald, in a men's prison for acting in self-defence. It's disgusting. Uh, I'd really like to thank Gio for organising the event today for us to stop and reflect on these tragedies. Uh, this Remembrance Day is, is a vitally important day for our community, I think, and one shamefully overlooked by many people, despite the huge death toll year upon year. Uh, but what is more important than remembering them today, uh, to me anyway, is actually honouring them tomorrow and the day after that and all the other days of the year, when we move through the world as students, parents, teachers, friends, family members and activists. 
What is enormously important is the difference we can make by doing small things to prevent violence and ignorance in our homes, in our communities and within our government. Uh, in what is considered a liberal country, <laughs> trans people are still fighting to receive adequate health care, legal rights and just to move through the world as ourselves without having to worry whether or not we'll be abused, raped or murdered. Every year we take a day to remember the hundreds more of our community killed by hate, neglect and ignorance. We need to leave here today to remind all of those who raise our experiences, ignore our needs and attack our community that trans people are here, we exist and this needs to stop. My name's Rory, I'm the chair of FDM Brighton. Uh, my day job is I work in the police as the LGBT caseworker. I'll try to speak up as well. Um, and I, I work with uh, my colleagues Rich Richer um, and Sergeant Evans to um, support you when you are victims of, well, if, sorry, <laughs> victims of hate crime. I'm also a trans man. That says it all, the when. <laughs> exactly. Um, I. I have to admit, I really hate this day, and um, I'm very grateful that uh, PC Bridger, Rich, my friend, um, actually wrote a speech that he was going to deliver, um, but very kindly last minute has got me to deliver it instead. So I'd like to read his words. Um, first of all, I'd like to say how encouraging it is to see so many people here on this wet and windy evening. It's truly encouraging to know that in this Facebook generation, People are still wanting to stand up and be counted in the real world. What saddens me is that we're here to march such a sorrowful occasion. According to Wipeout Transphobia, 265 people have lost their lives in the past 12 months in transphobic hate crimes. That's another 260 names to, to the list of people that we remember on the 20th of November every year. It should not be this way. We should not be remembering these people just once a year but every day. And we must do all we can to ensure that we send out the message to all people. We, sorry. We must do all we can to ensure we send out the message that all hate crime is abhorrent and will not be tolerated. Coming together in vigils such as this one is important to show unity. But we must we must also be sure that we remain vigilant in looking out for each other. When you see hate going on, reject it, report it, don't tolerate it. Woo! And just very briefly, um, there's a service, a memorial service on Sunday afternoon. Um, I'd encourage you all to come, please. It's at Dorset Gardens Methodist Church from 3pm. Thank you. Hey, um, I'd also like to invite uh, Verity up to say a poem. <laughs> I was going to read something that I wrote the other day after someone tried to actually start a fight with me in the street and it was the one time that I actually stood up to myself in that situation and I, I really terrified him, which was uh, quite satisfying but yeah, um, <laughs> I decided to kind of rise above that maybe and write something for today which uh, I actually wrote minutes ago so yeah. Well done! In the native skin, gender is a reflexive fear and it is fear that submits the human in panic to reduction to nomination. The soul seized into binaries, envy and objection. Yet through the yearning eyes of the silence, we collectively stare ahead into the real and unconquerable desires. The soul at large, the body and mind emancipated from the bonds of normativity. Our desires are above normal. The world we create is beyond opposites. From our collective and infinitely diverse throats comes a sound, morphous, bold, undeniable and true. I'm Steph Scott, the chair of the Clear Project. Um, 
we've been supporting trans people for the last 12 years and I noticed the numbers when I first did one of these vigils the numbers were 56 to increase in five years by over five times is dreadful also you may, may not be aware that often the 265 reported deaths 200 of them were from South America and Brazil by far and away the worst country with 126 people killed this is mainly down to the fact that there is no support for trans people they are forced to do one of two jobs either sell their bodies or sell drugs and that makes them victims of crimes many times over it is time that we as a nation turned around and said to supposed bigger nations like, like Brazil, like China, like Russia, that human rights are equal rights. And as Joe Biden, the Vice President of America recently said, trans rights are the civil rights of the 21st century. We must do something now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just very briefly, um, I have some flies here about the service on Sunday as well that's going on from 3 till 5 at Dorset Gardens. If anyone would like one, well, I'll just pass them around now. Okay, um, I'd like to introduce Sammy. Hello. Does somebody want to take this and try and point it at me and fiddle with the thing? Well, that, do I press to make it right, don't, No, it's going already. That's, just just uh, press this. Yeah, uh, no, don't worry, it's going already. So if you just twiddle that until it gets clear here. Okay. Oh, all right, okay. How have you worked this bloody thing? Is it on? Oh, it's on. <laughs> Hello. Well, I'm probably the comedy act for this evening. Um, as much as this horrible, horrible things happen to all of us all the time, throughout the world, terrible, terrible things, we need to look forward and not let them define ourselves as individuals. We are individuals as much as anybody else, and we should have those rights just like everybody else. And we're lucky in this country to have so much freedom, but so many other countries simply do not. I want transsexual people, different people, anybody with any sort of change, difference, originality is probably the word, Uniqueness is probably another one. I want us to be loud, proud, out there, and positive. From my perspective, I am getting myself there, out there, on the telly. This is the aim, and be cool, so that everybody else can feel so much more confident and not be scared about difference. Thank you very much, everybody. Be cool! <laughs> I have no idea what I've got, but I hope it's all right. Oh, don't worry. There's, there's there audio there. Some like of it something. was there. Absolutely. Hello. Hello. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many people here. Um, my name is Danny Harris. I'm actually part of um, the LGBT network at American Express. I'm not here representing them in any means. I'm here to speak for myself. Um, what I just wanted to say is that as trans folk, it's vitally important that we let ourselves be out there, we make ourselves visible, and we can be counted. Because without people seeing our presence, it's impossible for people to know and accept us. What I also wanted to say was that in a very liberal city such as Brighton, we still have problems, and these are things that needed to be addressed. Now, it's excellent to see PC Bridger here and uh, Rory, and thank you ever so much indeed for coming. But if you have problems, report them. I mean, three years ago, there was a murder in our very own city of a trans woman named Andrea Waddell. I don't know how many of you knew her, or how many of you ever met her, but she was a wonderful person. I knew her personally. And we all need to be aware and make sure that these things happen. Not just in Brighton, but around the rest of the country. And I've been unfortunate enough a friend, a trans woman called Natasha. Um, I only ever knew her online, she lived in Hull, but she received an exceptional amount of transphobic bullying and 
that caused her to take her own life this year. So rest in peace, Natasha, and please be vigilant and be active, everyone. It's, it's important. Thank you. I just wanted to say that it's very easy to feel very alone, it's very easy to feel fearful of other people around um, and as a cis guy, I just want to say that there's a lot of people out there that will put them, will have your back, that will be out there for you and will do everything you need to help you feel safe um, and it may not be the sort of people that you think it will be but we do exist um, and we want to help you in any way we can. would like to say anything? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much everyone for coming. And um, I'd like to take a couple of seconds for everyone to just think about who we've lost and who has been lost and what this day means. And then in a couple of minutes we're going to bump, we're going to stamp our feet, we're going to shout, we're going to scream, we're going to clap, we're going to make a lot of noise. We're going to make noise for everyone who has been silenced. So shall we count down? Ten. Nine. Nine. Eight. eight seven. Six. six five, five. Four. four three, three. Two. One. Thank you to Gio as well. Yeah! Give me the thing. Is it working? I think I think we should all do a very big shout out for Gio herself for putting all this together and being utterly amazing. Give it a break! Woo!